Watching local news that matters. This is Local 44 Morning Brew. According to the National Missing and Unidentified Persons Database, there are more than 600,000 people reported missing. One of those missing persons is a woman who disappeared nearly 50 years ago. Her family is now up here looking for answers. This is Mystery in the Mountains. It's not unusual for someone to come to police with a report of a missing person, a friend or a loved one. But for Brattleboro Police Detective Lieutenant Jeremy Evans, the missing persons report he received this year was different. In May of this year, Michael came to the station to ask us if we had found his sister. Detective Lieutenant Evans recalls the time Michael Erickson came to Brattleboro to ask about his sister, Nancy. Erickson told him no one had heard or seen from her since the fall of 1973, 48 years ago, when she checked out of a halfway house. We have her through the fall of 1973 here in, in Brattleboro, in Vermont, Wyndham County area, but definitely in Brattleboro, um, up until like October of 1973, and then nothing. Nancy Erickson was around 22 when she disappeared following an auto theft arrest. She's from Long Island, but how and why she landed in Vermont is part of the mystery her family wants to solve. We have no idea why she went to Brattleboro, why she ended up there. Some background on Nancy's life may provide some answers. Nancy is one of four children, two brothers and one sister. The four grew up on Long Island and moved to Elmira, New York. When their parents separated, some of the children went their separate ways. Nancy and her older brother, Michael, went to college. She went on to Corning Community College and got her RN degree. When I got married, went right on to Wilmore, Kentucky, Asbury Theological Seminary. Mom, Rose Marie, remarried and moved to Tampa with the two younger children, Sandy and Kevin. Sandy recalls when Nancy moved in. After she graduated, she came to Florida and she was living with us. And she was a RN at Tampa General Hospital. Both Sandy and Kevin say they immediately noticed a change in their sister. She was given the man who apparently had a heart attack or something here. She was doing the uh, chest compressions. And she was doing this for a time here and he died and everything. Mm -hmm. And so she took that really quite hard. Kevin says Nancy would come home from work sad and mentally drained. When Nancy was working at the hospital, I know that she would come home a lot of times very, very, you know, depressed. So I, I think her job was absolutely <clears throat> impacting her kind of mentally. Sandy tells me at one point she had her sister admitted to the hospital for her well-being. She came home and I was the only one home and she came in at our room and she started packing her big duffel bag. I said, what are you doing? And she said, I'm leaving. A really tall man was with her. And that's where the trail leads to Vermont, when their mother got a call from Bellows Falls Police. My mother got a call. She was up in Vermont, and she had got arrested for taking somebody's car. According to the Brattleboro Reformer, Nancy Erickson was charged with stealing a car in Putney in October of 1973. In the article, Nancy told police she only had six cents to her name and that the car she was driving ran out of gas and that she was on her way to visiting friends in White River Junction. But her siblings still have no idea who she would be visiting. I don't know. It was just like she disappeared. Erickson could have faced two years in jail. Instead, the district judge placed Nancy on probation for up to two months and placing her in a halfway house in Brattleboro, the last place she was seen. My mom and I went and we bought a couple outfits and we shipped them to her up in the halfway house. And it was like, I don't know, a week late, weeks later, a month later, the packages came back. On a, and, and so I guess my mother tried to call to find out what was going on, and that's when we found out she, she, she just walked out. The last thing family members received was Nancy's W-2 form. It was from the Brattleboro retreat where she worked. After that, nothing. I don't know. It seems a little odd. When her father died in 1985, Nancy received a share of the estate. To this day, that money remains unclaimed. Each of us may have got uh, $1,500 or $2,000 a piece as kids. Uh, Nancy never collected that. Their mother passed a year later, still not knowing where her daughter may be. The family is still trying to figure that out. Well, maybe she's just passing through. I don't know. After nearly five decades, the Erickson siblings are ready to find answers to these questions. If you have any information on Nancy Erickson's whereabouts, please contact Detective Lieutenant Jeremy Evans with Brattleboro Police or the department's anonymous tip line. All of that information will be found on our website at myshamplainvalley.com.
Some hurdles, the lack of documentation, since it's been so many years since Nancy disappeared. So what's next in this case? Detective Lieutenant Evans tells me he's looking at how forensic technology could take this case in a new direction. I'll explore that aspect and others in a future edition of Mystery in the Mountains. I'm Libby Farrow.